Wow, that was. Oh, hey! I'm here to talk about wrestling. Wait, why do I have my. Wait a second. That's the wrong hat. I'll toss that up there in the closet later. Kim, hello and welcome to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Wrestling show. My name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend is currently on assignment somewhere. And that leaves me alone to talk about some pro wrestling. In fact, I'm here to talk about some evolution. And um, for the most part, it was an okay show. It had its high points. It had some low points. Um, I know I, I couldn't find it. I have to find my other one. It's the Baltimore Orioles. But I believe the Boston Red Sox are now World Series champions, or it was that they're up 4-1. And that kind of tells you how great the evolution was. The fact that I was going back and forth online between that and wrestling. I'd rather watch the World Series than, than some wrestling match. Wow. Bad. Well, let's talk about some woman's evolution. Again, this was WWE Evolution, the first all-women pay-per-view. And you saw my predictions. Ooh, let's see here. I have to figure out my predictions now. Let's see how I did it. See here. Ronda Rousey did win. I go through things very quickly. Rousey won. She won. They won. Baszler won. Uh. See, I have to. I must tabulate because yeah, again, I have predictions. My girlfriend and I made predictions. I wrote these down. See, or so. Oh, I'll also have some show notes for for next week. Next week, well, I'll I'll get to next week a little bit later. But let's see here, very quick in a rundown. There were one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches. Let's see, so it's out of seven. Of seven. I'm actually out of six for my girlfriend because they changed the match. Ooh, WWE. So I had Bailey. Your opening match. Your Trish and Lee defeated James and Fox. And I'll get into more detail soon. One for both of us. Um, from there. They had the Battle Royal. I actually guessed correctly. <laughs> so hard to do. But Nia Jax did win. Too bad. My girlfriend's pick was amazing. She wanted to be cross to win. <laughs> I would have bought her lunch dinner for a year. I think he cross won that. Um they didn't have that many. But me. But then they had Eoshai versus Tony Storm. Girlfriend got that one, so some mark there for her. Uh, they didn't have the the UK Women's Champion. If they did, it was on a pre-show, and I don't think there was a pre-show. I don't know. That's just weird. That that was one of their advertised cards. That would have been exciting to. Said said Nikki. Nikki's. Well. Um. Let's see here. That one, that one, that one. Then it was... Oh, wait, there should be four. Oh, that's right, because she didn't pick that one. Did I get two wrong? Oh, wait, no. Shane, uh, 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 I'm sorry. Kyrie Sane versus Shayna Baszler. Oh, my girlfriend got that right. I didn't. Trish? Oh, that's why. I didn't count that one. Then Banks, Bailey, and Natalia defeated the, the Riot Squad. They didn't have that match. Mention that one. No. Oh wow, that's another one that I got wrong. Oh no, Kyrie Sane lost to Shane and Baszler. I got that one right. Weird. Now, four out of seven. Better than fifty percent. Lynch. 
Fiat Flair. You both had that. I had Ronda Rousey winning. Oh, wow. I had six out of seven matches. Wait, which one did I get wrong? Oh, it was the NXT match. Inside. Bleach. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say inside Vince's head. And my girlfriend got three out of six. So she gets 50 50. WE booking. Not too bad. Well, actually, I can't believe I got six out of. I picked six out of seven. Well, there's, yeah, there were seven. There were supposed to be. There should have been eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, and there were seven. And my girlfriend didn't know about the ones, so she got three out of six. And very simply, I am the one inside. I don't know if you can see that. But I got six out of seven. So I'm definitely inside the Vincent K. McMahon's head. Whereas my girlfriend, she's a 50-50 WWE booker. So that was Evolution. And now it's time to kind of run through matches. Yeah, and give them my ranking. Remember, the worst thing you could ever get is a piece of toast. Because it's plain. It's blah. It's boring. The best, however, you can get is flaming on that. The Country Club of Wrestling Mash. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff in between. Um, it goes, you get a piece of toast, can of soup, eh, better. Ham sandwich is a ham sandwich. Then you start to get to the better ranking of, of your cheeseburger. And it's hard to screw up a cheeseburger. And they taste good. Of course, you have your surf and turf, and then, of course, filet mignon. Your girlfriend does not different, um, again, because she's out on assignment. She does it differently. She has her heart. She gives it as many heart. I think a half heart, whole heart, one and a half hearts, and a double heart. Yeah, double heart. That's pretty good. We're gonna have my little breakfast. I still have my little my beverage of choice going. And then after this, I do have to get back to hoboing. My name is Hobo Tom. You're watching the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show on YouTube. Well, let's talk about some wrestling, since that's what I'm here to do. Again, hurry, Boston. I think they're going to be World Series champions. be really fun. Then they're just that much fun of a team to watch. And kind of a childhood favorite between them and the Baltimore Orioles. Although, Baltimore, although once Cal Ripken left, and they started to, to go, you know what, I'm going back to Boston. Boston's kind of a fun, fun, fun sports town. But let's talk about the wrestling matches. The most of the card was okay. I mean, there was nothing truly exciting. I think they had the NXT women wrestle in the WWE style, which kind of brought those matches on a little bit. I mean, they weren't bad. I mean, for a while, the NXT matches were were. were with the exception of the one, better than the WWE matches. Um, so the first match of the night, we have Trish Stratus and Lita versus Alicia Fox and Mickey James and Alexa Bliss walked into the ring. I know there were things about Alexa Bliss having a concussion or like a broken nose. They look fine to me. So let's give a little bit more angle for this. There we go. There we go. And wearing my wrestling t-shirt. I do need one more. I just had to do my laundry. I pull this out of the laundry, so it's a nice warm t-shirt. Well, let's talk about this match. Um, they came out in a Halloween costume. Especially Alicia Fox and Mickey James. It's not Halloween yet. But that's my own personal thing. For the most part. This was this was a space this was a face legend legacy spot fest. And Lita and Trish Stratus are kind of wearing different ring gear than I remember them. Um, Lita has mommy boobs now. 
So, again, hey, one of the two undefeated is Father Time. Uh, poor Fox. She just gets beat up. Poor Mickey. They're just there to, to take the loss. There are a lot of botches, too. It's really horribly done. Um, again, very beef feeling. For an opening match, it really didn't get me in the show. I think that took away from kind of the rest of the card because after everything else, I'm like, eh, that's good. Again, it's one person's opinion. If you have a different opinion, you can feel free to like, to, well, dislike, and comment. Or you can even email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Again, just to see what I'm saying, you can always subscribe. And if you do like what I'm saying, you can always like. So, that, that whole match, what was a can of suit match? It just really didn't do anything for me. It was nice to see Trish and Lee to come back, but as a first match, it kind of fell flat. Next, we have the Battle Royal, which is fun. Um, for, for the most part, the, there was a whole bunch of good spots. The Iconics, I think, began to run down everyone. It wasn't like the Royal Rumble where they had called in every three or five minutes. This kind of did, for the most part, a abbreviated introduction. And they all went to the ring. The bell rang. It was on. Um, I just know the Iconics, I think, started to trash talk everyone because they did that. They were the first ones eliminated, both of them. This also seems short. I want to say it was only a half an hour for a battle royal. I don't think it was take like a good solid hour, and and the whole show ended right around ten thirty. Actually, before ten thirty. Ten thirty now. But wasn't that it was from seven to ten thirty? So that's only three and a half hours. They said about three and a half four hours. Good, more time for me hoboing, and I'll get to. Get home and get some sleep before I go to work tomorrow morning in my aluminum. But, and then after the Iconics got eliminated, it just seemed to be like Legends versus all the current superstars. Um, Molly Hyle was there, Ivory was there, Wandra Blaze was there, a few others were there. You can't see this, but my, my cat's taking a nap in her kitty bed. And that's what happens when it gets a little bit cooler out there. She likes to sleep in that bed. That's cute. I won't bug her. So normally I'd bring her up. I think the only really interesting thing is that uh, Sonya got eliminated by Mandy Rose. Does this mean a heel turn or face turn by Mandy Rose? We shall see on Monday night. Oh, no, they're on, oh, they're on SmackDown. We'll have to wait till Tuesday to see them. Figure out what's going on with those two. It could be a Jimmy J. Uso situation where it's like, hey, I just wanted to eliminate you for the fun. But we'll see. Um, and then Carmella came in. Well, Carmella was always around the outside. Uh, let's see here. It was a Alana got double teamed by Tamina and Nia Jack. Could that lead to an all-female Samoan SWAT team? I can only hope. I don't remember the Samoan SWAT team when they were managed by, I think, Captain Lou Albano. And then they became the head shrinkers under Johnny Polo, I think. Or I might be getting things a little bit back, a little bit switched up, but... My memory is getting a little fuzzy on some things, especially from the early 80s and 90s. Um, then there was like an eight-woman indie spot. It was like an eight-woman suplex. It was kind of fun. 
Carmella came in. Once Carmella comes in, dance break. And then I rejoined in on the dance break. It was fun. And then Ember Moon started to eliminate people left and right. She eliminated Carmella, Tamina. What happened to the others? And then all I know is that the final three were Zelina Vega, Nia Jax, and Ember Moon. And it was fun. I did predict correctly that Nia Jax would win. Uh, it's a battle royal. It seems somewhat short and somewhat predictable. Hey, if I can predict it, it's predictable. That was really a, a ham sandwich match. And then the next match we had uh, for the NX. NXT May Young Classic Finals. We had Io Shirai versus Tony Storm. Tony is really good. She's quick. She has an amazing ring awareness for only being 23 years old. I went, oh, happy birthday, Tony Storm. I forget if it was today or yesterday. She actually turned 23. Um, Io Shirai, great dropkick. Gets the height, vicious. She has that explosiveness. And though, however, Tony Storm is a master of the German suplex. Again, Ayo Shirai, she has that strong style. She pulled off a 619. Um, a whole bunch of moves that, that I like, and, and both of them have really good move sets. It was a fun match. And again, they had their kind of feel good moment with Triple H and Stephanie. Uh, both of them got haze of flowers. Um, Tony Storm, I think, got the Mae Young trophy. This was a fun match. It's a cheeseburger match. Oh, with that being said, um, Iron Knuckle Shuffle, you know what? This, oh my, F-O-M-F-G moment goes out to you because you got copyrighted too by the WWE. We try on YouTube. I feel for you, my brother from YouTube or at least person in a similar situation. So this OMFG moment goes out to you. I mainly say that because during some of these matches I decided to actually get some work done and make the gifts I needed to. So I think I made it during this match. Um, next we had the Rice Squad versus Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Natalia. And this this was a good match. This was a good match. Um, I think I gave it a better rating only because they did a lot of tribute moves. Um, Liv first of all is a great screamer in the ring. So. She makes it a little bit more fun. But again, the thing is, what, what's up with these Halloween costumes? Am I going to have to wear a Halloween costume? I guess so. If I do the intro to my show, maybe I'll dress up as something. We'll figure something out. Um, but again, Liv's a great screamer. And they're just coming out in costumes, trying to make it feel more important than the show is, I guess. I don't know. Um, but again, they did the heart line. Sarah Logan does need to use that headbutt, though. That would be so cool if she did a, sp a spinning discus headbutt. Again, she stole Natty's moves of the discus forearm. And Sasha gets a hot tag. And Sasha should never, ever... Do a suicide dive ever. But she looks like she's going to kill herself. 
And by that, I mean like just jumping headfirst into the concrete. It's not good, especially due to the fact that she has a bad neck. So Sasha Banks, no more suicide dives. You and, and, and Brie Bella. Um, Logan and Liv Morgan hit the Doomsday device. Yeah, another tribute to the Legion of Doom. Um, then there was a double sharpshooter. Uh, Liv. Liv's not getting the pin. That's what I thought for a long time. That Liv was like, they're going to give Liv Morgan a pin? Oh. Uh, She's eating the pen. And I want to say Ruby Wright actually ate the pen, I think. From a frog, frog splash. Again, a tribute to Eddie Guerrero. Rest in peace, my main man. Um, again, Sasha Banks, who's, who's, who said that she tried to style her wrestling after Eddie Guerrero. And has done a couple of Eddie things. Eddie Guerrero things. Frog splash. And Banks, Bailey, and Natalia go over. It was a fun enough match. I'm also gonna. I've been waffling on this one. It should be a ham sandwich or a cheeseburger. I'm gonna have to go. My first feeling. It's gonna say this is a ham sandwich match. That's because it just, I don't know, it didn't, there were some good spots. Then it elicit any emotion, though. I don't know. It didn't, hard to explain, but it, it, it just seemed like a really good Raw match. And if this is, if you're putting on a really good Raw match on pay-per-view, why have the pay-per-view? I mean, I guess they had this match instead of the NXT UK Championship. Maybe that's sour me to it. And this is what it was. It was a ham. Oh, they say you want an evolution. Oh. I turned the video on. I got. I gotta find my boss in. Back to wrestling. Again, I took a quick break. Boston still eating four one. World Series champion Bay Bay. Oh wait, there's only one way to do Bay Bay. Boston Red Sox. Bay Bay. Then this leads us to the NXT Women's Championship, where you have Shayna Baszler, the champion. Versus Kyrie Sane. And Renee, I think, had the line of the night where she, I want to say she said this is women's wrestling. And this was a really fun, good match. I mean, Shane is definitely the stronger of the two. Um, she's actually becoming a great wrestler. Kyrie Sane had a crossbody, though. From the top to the outside of the ring. Oh, that was awesome, though. I mean,. This was almost the match of the. This was actually the match of the night leading up to this, leading up to this point. I'll get to that soon. But I mean, it was just fun. Um, that it was uh, the Duke woman got hit by a spinning backfist by Kyrie Sane. They teased interference on Shannon Baszler's part, so now you're gonna have a three woman faction, and they're gonna stay there for a while because Shayna Baszler, well. Well, again, and then the uh, uh, Shafari or Schaefer also got backfisted. But uh, Shannon Baszler put Kyrie Sane in a submission, and Kyrie Sane did 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 the classic heel, the classic I'm sorry face thing, and passed out. She never tapped; she passed out. So that's good. And th this, with all the action and the back and forth and the, the teasing of a dusty finish. So if they had a dusty fin if they had a dusty finish in this match, the thing ain't gonna be what I give it, baby. It was gonna be a something else. And that something else ain't too special, if you know what I mean. But for the most part, because it was it was a clean match, and again she did pull off the baby face loss. This was a cheeseburger match.
Then we got into actually what was the, the, the match of the night. We had woo, Charlotte Flair versus oh oh even Becky Lynch. The only down thing I can really say about this match is that Lynch's like Valkyrie makeup is a bit too much. I just like evil Becky. Evil Becky comes out, black spaghetti top, like like she did for N the NXT beatdown. Black, kind of cropped off, t-shirt, tank top, whatever it was, black jeans, just beats up people. Keep it simple, and it look at look better. Even if she just wore her her other her regular outfit without the, all the shininess. And just in more subdued grays and blacks, that would be fine too. Then all all the face makeup, and that came off rather quickly, I think. Ugh. And then Becky Lynch had a nasty looking bruise too. I mean, again, Evil Becky's just so good. Evil Becky could find a kendo stick too. Um, a couple of high points of this match. Again, there was an ECW chair moment, which if it wasn't a more civilized crowd and if it wasn't all-woman show, it kind of worried me a little bit because we all know what happened when Terry Funk threw in one chair. Everyone threw in a chair. So again, they were just trying to see how many chairs they could get in the ring. Um, chair shots back and forth, kind of semi-protected chair shots. Um... <laughs> Charlotte Flair should never use a table again. Some women, the women have bad luck using tables. I don't know if they actually don't saw them in half. But, again, the, the table does the no-sell. Uh, Charlotte hit a swanton bomb. Which made me go, wow. And then Becky Lynch hit a top rope leg drop. So again, it seemed like a really a tribute match to some of the men, because Jeff Hardy does a swanton, but I would say Matt Hardy used to do a leg drop from the top rope too, especially through a table. I mean, Evil Becky is just so good though. Again, with with a couple different types of shots and and, and foreign objects. Yeah, if you're gonna be a heel. You need to use that foreign object. And this is a match of the night for sure. I mean, even though it's the last woman standing match, Flair, uh, Charlotte Flair went for the figure four on a ladder. And then she tried to get the figure eight on a ladder, which just seemed way too difficult. Um, eventually, Becky hit the leg drop from the ladder through a table. I, don't, I think at that point, Charlotte couldn't answer the 10 count. But this was a really fun surf and turf quality match. And Becky, an evil Becky retained. Um, for a while, it seemed Becky tried to become good. Trying to implore Charlotte, stay down. Stay down. Don't make me do anymore. Like, no, you You can see her. You can see the conflict within her. And that's going to be good because hopefully they can pull this through maybe a WrestleMania and do something hopefully interesting then. It's not definitely through the next big pay per view is Survivor Series. Team Becky versus Charlotte. Ooh, sounds like a booking idea. So you could have Charlotte's definitely going to have Charlotte, Sonya Deville. Who else would there? Who else is on that? Who else is on uh, Naomi, Asuka, and 
Lana. Becky would have Mandy Rose because she turned. So instead of Mandy Rose on, on Team Charlotte, it would be uh, Boo Sonya Deville. So it would be Becky, Mandy, Rose. Who's another female here on SmackDown? Wait a second, do they have any more female heels? They don't. Wait a second, who just slot a face? So that and three more people. Oh, the Iconics? There's four. I just call up a crazy Nikki Cross. <laughs> Nikki Cross is the answer to all the woman questions. Well, which woman should win? Nikki Cross should win. Who should who should join team, team Becky? Nikki Cross should join. That makes sense. And um, then, oh wow, that that's again that was a surf and turf match of the night. So then we had Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella. It was a so so man. I mean, Nikki got in the octopus stretch. Her Nikki driver, whatever it is, two point oh. I don't even know what it's called. I just don't even know why it went on long as it did. Brie Bell eventually got involved, and for all her 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 efforts to help her twin sister, she got piled on with her sister, and Ronda dropped them both. Nikki a little more awkwardly than Brie. Um, Ronda again takes out both Bellas, and then she eventually makes Nikki Bella tap the armbar. This is a ham sandwich. This was a. I was waffling on this one too. It was a ham sandwich. It wasn't really a can of soup match. It, it had a little more action. At least Nikki Bell got in some offense. There was a little bit of an interference. It just went longer than I thought it would, and it wasn't overall compelling. But that's it. That was evolution in a nutshell. And it was okay. Again, I managed to get inside Vince's head, whereas my girlfriend is now a 50-50 WWE booker. And the proof is actually in the handwriting because I actually wrote stuff down for a change. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Um, some programming notes about next week. Um, I think I'm going to push behind. Well, I can still make my Raw video. So Raw might be posted Tuesday. The SmackDown and Mix Max challenge would still be posted Tuesday night. Um, again, it's a Halloween special on Wednesday. Thursday, you'll get our Crown Jewel predictions once we see what's going on at Crown Jewel. I'm going to post a little bonus video too with that Crown Jewel. I'm going to call it 10 Things to Do Instead of Watching Crown Jewel. And it's going to be somewhat funny. Um, Friday will be the typical Lucha Underground Day. And then probably on Sunday, maybe Saturday night, I'll, I would have had time to watch Crown Jewel. And watch enough of it to say something about it. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, thank you everyone for watching. Again, Iron Knuckle, what? welcome to my boat. I still have, I think, a little bit more than 60 days on my YouTube suspension, too. YouTube's not like 
other wrestling promotions. Or WWE some other wrestling promotions. No, pretty strict. You no, know, you can might as well videotape the whole Lucha Underground show. Impacts fairly lax. Um Triple A is pretty strict for some reason. I don't know about Ring of Honor. I don't know. Maybe I'll do something with Ring of Honor if they have a big pay-per-view or something. Again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And World Series Champion Boston, baby! Have a good night. Bye.